When I pre-ordered my Ender 3 in April of 2018, I was so excited to get my first Creality printer. At that point, I'd already been 3D printing for a couple of years and the CR10 had gained a ton of popularity up until that point. I had a lot of friends that really liked their CR10 machines and on multiple occasions, I almost got one, but I really didn't have a need for such a large form factor printer. Well then Creality released their CR10 Mini, which to me was way more attractive and way more something in the realm of what I would want. And after talking to my buddy Chuck over at Filament Friday, I was nearly sold on picking one up, but life got busy and I still decided to hold off. When Creality announced their Ender 3, which was essentially a smaller, even smaller, more budget friendly version that had a lot of the things that made the CR10 machine so popular, I was sold and instantly pre-ordered one. At the time I ordered it, I had no idea that it would blow up to the extent that it did and that it would actually change the way I looked at budget 3D printers forever. A couple of months after I bought that machine, I made a video calling it the best budget friendly or best beginner 3D printer of 2018. And with Christmas being around the corner and it being two and a half years later, I felt it was time to revisit that. So today's video is gonna be all about the Ender 3 printer. We're going to talk about my journey with it from when I pre-ordered it all the way up until now. And we're gonna see if I still feel the same way about it. We're also gonna go over the plethora of mods and upgrades I've done to it. It's gonna be quite a long video. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Up until the Ender 3, most of the 3D printers that I've gotten were complete kits, taking an entire day to assemble. And a lot of them used acrylic frames, which meant that they were much more difficult to keep calibrated. For someone that wanted to get into 3D printing at that point, you either had to fork out quite a bit more money to get something that was already put together and fully assembled, or you had to put in the work. And this was something that I think was a huge hurdle for a lot of people wanting to get into 3D printing because maybe the full kit was too intimidating or I had seen plenty of people that thought they would be able to get the kit and assemble it and just had nothing but problems and were never able to get a good print off of these full kit machines. So when my Ender 3 did finally show up, I was so excited. I cracked the printer open right away and within 30 or 40 minutes, I had this printer fully assembled, put together and ready to do some printing. And after a first couple of prints off of the machine, I was blown away by the surface quality that I was getting with like no tweaking whatsoever on this $200 printer. At that time, I was going to school as well as running a small print farm out of my room where I was selling parts that I made online, and the Ender 3 instantly was added to that print farm and began cranking out parts right away. After just a couple of months of owning the Ender 3, I decided that I wanted to upgrade just the bed on it to a flex plate system. This is something that I had seen around a lot, but I'd never experienced for myself, and the main issue I was having was that some of the parts I was printing out were really flat and kind of big. And so it was difficult for me to get the spatula underneath it sometimes. And I got really tired of having to pry away at it. So I went ahead and picked up a built tack flex plate system. At the time, they either didn't have the size for the Ender 3, the 9.25 by 9.25, or they were just out of stock. So I opted for a 9 by 10, which is what I've been using on this machine ever since then. It's completely fine on the X axis, but on the Y axis, it does stick out about an inch roughly, um, but it's never caused any problems. And it was a huge game changer for my overall experience and really spoiled me in now that I just love using flex plate systems and almost dread having to take the spatula to a printer. So once I had installed the flex plate system, I printed with the machine completely stock for another couple of months. And then I decided that I wanted to add auto bed level into this printer. The majority of the parts that I had printed fine when they were just kind of in the center of the bed, but when I wanted to go bigger than like four to five inches, I ran into some inconsistencies and was hoping that getting a BL touch to do a mesh bed leveling would fix that. So I went through the process of flashing a bootloader, printing out a mount for the BL touch, mounting the BL touch, wiring it in and configuring a stock Marlin to work with this. And by some miracle, everything worked perfectly well, which this was the first time I had done a BL touch install, so there's always a chance things go wrong the first time, but I was able to get it up and running and it made a huge difference in just me not having to worry about re-leveling the bed or checking on anything when I was running big prints. And I ran it with the flex plate system and the BL touch very heavily printing out parts nonstop almost for the next four months. Then when November came around, Micro Swiss had released their all metal drop in hot end for the Ender 3. And the main reason why this was attractive to me was that I'd always wanted to experiment or do a bit of printing with nylon, but I wasn't able to on really any of my machines because they were all PTFE lined. So I went ahead and picked up the Microsoft hot end and installed it, which was 
really easy to do. And because I'd already flashed the bootloader over to my Ender 3 and I had that custom um, Marlin configuration, all I had to do was change the max temp to the new uh, max that it was able to hit and I was set and I was able to print now with um, nylon filaments. Then in December, something kind of strange happened. I did make a video about this back then, but in December, the BL Touch seemed to stop working and it was working in the sense that the probe would deploy, it would go around and do its leveling points, but it didn't seem to actually take. It didn't seem like it was actually saving to EEPROM or saving at all. And what would happen is when I was printing on one side of the printer, the nozzle would be way too close going into the bed. On the other side, it would be printing up in the air and it was a total pain. I went ahead and tried just about everything from checking the wiring, checking the firmware, reflashing the firmware, starting with clean firmware. And I, for the life of me, could not figure it out and got crazy frustrated and at that point decided, you know what, the leveling on this isn't that difficult, it's not that big of a bed and I had gotten much better at just leveling in general. So I went ahead and actually removed the BL Touch and went back to manual bed leveling. So at this point the Ender 3 was pretty much able to print with all of the filaments I had thrown at it, which I had tried PLA, ABS, PET, nylon, as well as some TPUs. On TPUs they were just TPUs around 95A shore hardness and I didn't go any softer. I had tried NinjaFlex, which is 85A shore hardness and I just never had any luck with it. Either I ran into um, under extrusion, inconsistent extrusion, or just lots of jams and clogging. And around that time, somebody reached out to me that had created a pretty simple budget-friendly direct drive setup for the Ender 3, which basically just took a bracket that would allowed you to move your stepper motor and your stock extruder on top of the hot end, making it direct drive. So I went ahead and installed that, and with that installed, I was able to print out with NinjaFlex, and honestly, I was really happy. The Ender 3 was in a crazy good place, and it could do just about everything that I wanted it to. So with my new direct drive installed, I was really excited because now the Ender 3 could print with all those filaments I'd previously listed and even NinjaFlex when I needed it. And I did use NinjaFlex quite a bit to print out some uh, buttons. I printed out a couple of gaskets. I printed out some cases. So it was really awesome being able to now print with this wide variety of materials. And this was the longest period of time I went without touching the Ender 3. I let it run with that configuration for 10 months. Then 10 months later, Micro Swiss, which is the same company that had made that hot end, released their own dual gear direct drive setup for the Creality Ender 3 and most Creality machines in general. This thing was catered for these types of machines so that way the install process was as simple as it could be. I actually did end up installing it and if you want to see how I did that, I can place a link in the description down below. But this thing was far superior to the direct drive I currently had been running, which was just using all of the stock components. Um, Micro Swiss's was machined out of aluminum. It had a dual hardened steel uh, geared extruder, which meant that instead of just being gripped as the filament passes through, it's normally just gripped on one side. Well, with the dual geared, it's gripped on both sides. So it basically eliminates just about all filament slipping. And because those gears are hardened steel, you can now print with abrasive filament. So things that have carbon, things that have glass, things that have glow in the dark, um, anything that's abrasive, you can now print through this. And so I definitely was excited and jumped on that right away. And Although again, the budget-friendly version of the direct drive I'd been running had worked up until that point and it had worked quite well, this was just an all-around cleaner and better option that allowed you to do even more and really improved my print quality and the reliability of printing in most materials, but definitely flexibles as well. Then just one month later, Big Tree Tech released a 32-bit drop-in replacement board for the Creality Ender 3, which was awesome because most of the time when you install a uh, replacement or aftermarket board into your 3D printer, it requires you to print out a mount, you have to change up all of your plugs, like it's very, very involved. But with Big Tree Techs, it was the same form factor, it took the same plugs, I think it even had the firmware already pre-flashed, if I remember correctly, for the Ender 3. So all you had to do was unplug everything, put the new board in, plug everything back in, and you had a 32-bit board, and you had a Trinamic drivers, so it was a much quieter machine, which was a pretty awesome upgrade. And along with that, I also installed a big old touchscreen, which didn't necessarily add all that many features. Granted, there was some additional details I could now see, and it made my experience a lot more fun and enjoyable interacting with the machine using a bright touchscreen versus the kind of old, older style rotary dial or the, the you know, that the stock Creality Ender 3 comes with. Um, but at this point, looking at the Ender 3, it was nothing at all 
like it looked when I first got it, you know, two years prior at that point. The only things that were still stock on the Ender 3 was the power supply, the aluminum extrusions, the stepper motors, and the heated bed. Everything else had pretty much been gutted. And at this point I'd printed with just about everything from PLA all the way up to carbon fiber nylon. So I had printed with a ton of filaments and I've put thousands of hours on my Ender 3. I wish that it had a gauge. I mean, I swapped out the board and stuff like that. So it would have been pretty tough unless I wrote down kind of what the amount of print time was on there. but. With the amount of parts I printed for when I was running it in a print farm to for personal things around the house to content for the channel, it, it's had thousands of hours and this machine has been a beast. I do often get comments from people saying, well, if you've got to do all these mods and things like that, why not just get a better printer? Why not get a machine that already has most of these things? And kind of my answer to that is, is twofold. Well, the first is you don't have to do all of these mods. You don't really have to do any of these mods. If you told me that, hey, I just want a really low cost machine that can print nice PLA parts. Well, the Ender 3 does that. It does that really well. And mine did that for many, many months before I upgraded anything when it came to the hot end or the extruder. If you enclose it, it can do ABS parts pretty damn well stock as well. And I even ran quite a few PTG prints on it before I decided to upgrade the hot end. So you don't have to do all these upgrades. They're purely optional and you can do, you know, one of them, two of them, all of them, or none of them, depending on what it is that your goals are for your 3D printing and for this machine. Me, for example, I mean, my channel is, it was based off of modding when it first started out. I mean, the channel's name ModBot stems from when this channel first started, I was taking video game consoles and I was hacking them up both on the hardware and the software side to make them better, to make them more mine, to customize them and to add additional features they didn't already have. And I really enjoy that. So for me, being able to take something and use it as is or add my own little tweaks to it as I go or maybe you know swap this or upgrade that, I really enjoy that. I understand that that's not for everybody. And you know again, if you've got the bigger budget, there's nothing wrong with going with the more expensive machine. But for someone that just wants to get started and just wants to learn the technology, the stock, the stock Ender 3 is more than capable and anybody that's been printing for an extended period of time, like I'm coming up on like six and a half years of 3D printing, and they go back to what they started with, you'll know that the Ender 3 is substantially better than any of the 3D printers that we were printing with back then. And it is really a great option. And the people that get to start off with an Ender 3 versus like an ANA A8 or the stuff even prior to that are really lucky. What I love about the Ender 3 is that at its price point, so many more people are able to justify the purchase of a 3D printer. If you're not in an industry that requires you to use a 3D printer, seeing the industrial 3D printers are just not attainable for so many people. But at a price tag of around $200, a lot more people can justify a hobby 3D printer. And that's awesome. Is it the best printer out there? Absolutely not. Does it have the most features of any printer out there? No way but it is a fantastic starting point for you to get your bearings, dip your feet into the technology. And like I mentioned, and like I showed in this video, if you do want to grow with the machine, it's certainly able to evolve with you as you begin or as you grow yourself on your journey. And the combination of the one, this being, I, I would say that I'd have to see statistics, but I would say this is probably the most popular machine out there at all. There's probably the most units of it in existence right now. And meaning there's a ton of people that can help you if you run into issues. There's so many, like if you want to fix something or upgrade something or do a mod to your printer, look on YouTube, look in forums. You can find 10, 10 different tutorials on the same exact thing. So if you need to do something, the content's out there and that is so valuable when starting off and you're a little bit foreign to this technology or to this space. I still strongly believe that two and a half years later, the Ender 3 is a fantastic budget option for someone looking to get into 3D printing. I have seen a ton of people get this machine as their first machine and get very successful with this machine. And again, either evolve with the machine and do some upgrades as, as your needs might change, or at that point, you're ready to get a different machine potentially. But I think it is a fantastic starting point and this has been my journey with it the last two and a half years and this is still the same machine that I pre-ordered. I've kept it all this time as I've done all these upgrades to it. So let me know in the comments down below if we've got any other Ender 3 owners in the chat or in the, in the video. I'm sure that there's lots of us out there or if you're somebody that's maybe looking to pick up an Ender 3 for yourself for Christmas or just in general, um, I will place links in the description to 
all the videos I've made on the different upgrades. I'll try to place links to all of the various upgrades I've done as well if you wanna check them out or order some of these mods for yourself. But yeah, if you've got any questions at all, please let me know. I'm always happy to um, answer them and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, you guys rock. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday and this, this year has been insane. The channel has grown so much and it's all thanks to you guys. You guys absolutely rock. If you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description. Huge thank you to my current Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely amazing and you guys allow me to do what I love and spend more time doing it, which is making content for you guys. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot and I will see you in my next video. Peace guys.